With the dust finally cleared, the NBA world is recovering from the bomb that was dropped last week. James Harden is a 76er. Crazy. Within 13 months, James Harden will have represented three different NBA franchises. The Houston Rockets, the Brooklyn Nets, and now the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, if you're a James Harden fan or live in Philly, you're probably super excited at the newest NBA duo that can hopefully bring you guys a championship in Joel Embiid and James Harden. And if you're not a James Harden fan or a Brooklyn Nets fan, you probably have a few choice words about this entire situation. Hey, yo, what the f And that's completely fine. Positive or negative, I think a lot of NBA fans have opinions on what went down in this blockbuster trade. But as of recently and over the last few weeks, the person to blame for all of this happening is James Harden. From the rumors of wanting out of Brooklyn, looking unmotivated, and a plethora of many other reasons, the beard is currently public enemy number one in the NBA. You can actually find multiple articles that have been posted recently since the trade highlighting that James Harden wasn't a good teammate or refused to adapt to team basketball. But I'm telling you all of this to say, James Harden made the right decision leaving the Brooklyn Nets and isn't the main reason the Nets' victory crumbled. I understand Harden isn't the most favorable player in the NBA right now. Heck, he's not even my favorite player. But from what occurred over the past year and witnessing the Brooklyn Nets' big three downfall, this was almost inevitable due to a multitude of factors that forced James Harden to leave a team that featured Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Now, I'm not saying Harden is free from blame, because he isn't. But if we're gonna break this down, let's go back to January of last year. January 14, 2021. The Brooklyn Nets traded for James Harden after he clearly stated he wanted out of Houston. In his last press conference in Houston, he made it clear that, We're just not good enough. Um, you know, we just, we don't, we don't, uh, obviously chemistry, talent-wise, just everything, and it was clear. Um... Jesus Christ. After an overdue process and questionable actions by James Harden that left the Houston Rockets confused, Houston actively started shopping Harden to Brooklyn. With what Brooklyn had to give up, four future first-round picks, Karis LeVert, and newest all-star in Jared Allen, at the time, it was a no-brainer. It had to be done. At that time last season, the Nets were 7-6 and six and had just lost Spencer Dinwiddie for the year with a torn ACL. Knowing what had to be done, Harden was sent to Brooklyn and the big three was formed. Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and now James Harden. The three greatest scorers in this generation on the same team, if only it was that simple. At the very beginning, Kyrie wasn't even near the team for, let's just say personal reasons. More on that later. And within less than a month, KD would be silent for most of the year with another injury. He wouldn't be back till April 7th of that year. Not what Harden had expected, but we all knew that coming to Brooklyn was his choice, and he had to figure it out, even if these weren't the best circumstances. First game as a Brooklyn Net, what does he do? Eh, just a regular 32-point triple-double. I mean, who cares? Triple-doubles are overrated, right? What? But then it continued, and the wins kept piling on. And even without KD, the Nets were the best team in the Eastern Conference, while Harden was breaking Brooklyn Nets records and putting up MVP numbers. Don't believe me? Harden arguably was a favorite for MVP last year, and critics and pundits all believe so. It's Harden now pushing LeBron for MVP. You know, Skip, I always had Harden in the MVP discussion because he was playing so well. I mean, he's running away. I mean, what is he? He's probably over 11 assists per game right now. In my eyes right now, he is the MVP in the league uh, as, of this, as of today. No, as of today. What Brooklyn is doing, they've won 10 of their last 11 games. They're only a half game out of the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. I look at it from that perspective based on those circumstances, and I think the argument is sound on behalf of James Harden. Giving teams 26, 11, and 9 on 47% shooting, not the same Harden we all knew in Houston, but Harden had taken on the role of being more of a playmaker that season, getting guys involved, and playing, quote unquote, team basketball. Heck, <laughs> Kyrie was now the shooting guard, a position he thrives in, and he was giving guys 27 on almost nearly 50, 40, 90 shooting splits. The entire team looked like the undisputed favorite once KD returns. Unfortunately, as April hits, Harden is silent with a hamstring injury that would keep him out for an entire month, and he wouldn't return until one week before the playoffs began. In round one, the Nets faced the Celtics, and the Nets' big three got them boys out of there in five games. And in game four, showed the true strength of how dominant they could be routing Boston, KD had 42, Kyrie with 39, and James Harden with a whopping 23 and 18 assists in that game, and close out those boys at home. Round two was versus the Bucks, and within the first two games, we pretty much knew how this was gonna go. They went up 2-0 and in full control, but Harden re-injured that same hamstring in game two, 
the same hammy that kept them out for an entire month in the regular season, which in turn kept them out for the next three games in that series. And while he was out, Kyrie had just suffered a major ankle injury and kept them out for the remainder of the series, and the Bucks had somehow tied the series 2-2. Fast forward to Game 7, and it's clear Harden isn't nowhere near 100%, and the Nets are eliminated by the Bucks in a series that could have been different depending on injuries and KD's shoe size. In a season that looked like the Nets would be the champions, they were held back by almost everything and out short of reaching the goal that was the plan for the season. On top of that, Harden, for his stellar play that season, didn't even make an All-NBA team selection. Okay, okay, but let's get back to the present. Within this season, before the Harden trade, the Nets looked like a complete mess. James Harden was struggling to begin the year and arguably still dealing with his hamstring injury, but to keep it simple, he wasn't great at all. However, Kevin Durant was able to carry more of the offensive load this year now that he was fresh and healthy and he looked like an MVP candidate. But again, Kyrie was not available as well due to a stance on vaccination mandates in New York that kept him sidelined from the team. So essentially, Kyrie wasn't a part of the team to begin the season. More on that later. But even with the confusion in the Nets and with a depleted roster from last year, the Brooklyn Nets were still a team that had to be feared. When the Nets and the NBA allowed Kyrie Irving to play away games in this season, in one of the last games the Nets Big 3 would play together, they would face the number one seed the Chicago Bulls. And they showed that no matter how many games they miss, when they're on the court, they are the team to beat. Smacking the Bulls at one point by 40 in that game and getting the dub and waving to the crowd that the NBA is still their playground. Then everything basically went to shit again. KD suffers another freak injury that has him sidelined too well. We don't know when and Harden is left to carrying this team again without Kyrie Irving when they're at home. From a situation in Houston that he left to go out and win, Harden had somehow found himself in a situation where it was arguably the same. Your two best players on the team aren't available again for the second year and now this time you don't know when they'll be available and like i said before this roster was already completely depleted you add in the fact that the entire eastern conference has improved and many teams have added pieces to make a run this year we know the nets big three is great when they're on the court but the question mark was when or if would they ever be on the court with all this pondering harden essentially said to the nets that he wanted out fast forward to the trade deadline and the Brooklyn Nets are trading James Harden to Philadelphia for the 76ers. Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and two first-round picks. That's according to our Woj. What is your immediate Woo. reaction to that? Now, I've told you guys the backstory. And by the way I put it, you probably don't think too highly of James Harden. And that's fair. I've never been the biggest James Harden supporter, so this is rare for me to defend him. But you have to look at the bigger picture and context of what led to this. Leaving Brooklyn was the right decision for a multitude of reasons. Number one, Harden over his career has proven he is one of the greatest scorers of all time. We know this. He's an MVP, multiple time All-Star, All-NBA caliber player, and will most certainly be a Hall of Fame, first ballot Hall of Famer. But there is one thing he has yet to claim in his career, an NBA championship. He's been to the conference finals three times in his career, and two times if you count only the Rockets era but he hasn't been able to capture an NBA title, and as much as we say championships don't mean everything, players know what that means for their legacy, especially when Harden is labeled as a playoff choker. Kevin Durant has two championships. Kyrie Irving has one of the clutchest shots in NBA Finals history to secure his only NBA championship. At the end of the day, Kyrie and KD can end their careers right now and say they have accomplished the ultimate goal of winning a title. And that is exactly what Harden is on a mission to do. Even in the previous season, for the sake of the team, Harden took on more of a playmaking role and helped facilitate the offense for the entire team. Yes, team basketball. And even in his MVP caliber season when healthy, he wasn't even selected to an All-NBA team. He took the backseat for the success of others, played good basketball, and wasn't rewarded for it. Now for people who think that Harden leaving is weak on his part in search for a championship, that leads us to point number two. Availability is your best ability. I think Harden could have stayed. I don't excuse him looking checked out on the court, but I will say that since the Big 3 was formed in Brooklyn, formed on January 14, 2021, James Harden played 73 total games as a Brooklyn net. KD has played 71, and Kyrie has played 88. Harden joined the Nets in 2021, Kevin Durant made his debut in 2020, and Kyrie Irving joined the Nets in 2019. James Harden, when it was time to suit up, was there. The Nets played a total of 16 games together from January 14, 2021 to February 9, 2022. 16 games, 16. KD, I understand. He hasn't played because of the injuries and if he's on the court, 
the Nets probably don't have as many issues. But the main person I'm pointing blame to is Kyrie Irving. I won't get political about vaccine mandates because you have every right to make a choice you want with your body. And Kyrie has made a decision to not take the vaccine because he doesn't believe that that is the most important thing right now and finds it unfair that other people have lost their jobs for not taking a vaccine. So he's not against the vaccine itself, just the mandates. But besides all of that, Kyrie not being on the court is one of the main reasons James Harden requested a trade. You can't have your second best player not playing games and not around the team when the goal at the end of the day is to win a championship. I don't know about you guys, but unless every single person on the team isn't locked in on the goal of winning a title, you're as strong as your weakest link. You're not going to get very far if your entire team isn't on one accord. And like I said before, Harden came to Brooklyn to win and win long term. But if the guys around you are not sold on that, I'd want to leave too. And it's not just Harden. You have guys like Javon Carter and DeAndre Bembry playing minutes trying to fill the void that Kyrie created while KD is out and the blame is being pushed into Harden? I can't get along with that. And I think Kyrie is a great basketball player. He's going to be an Hall of Famer. But I'll put it as simple as this. If Kyrie was playing, I doubt James Harden requests a trade and entertains leaving the Nets. Especially when we've seen both these guys carry the franchise last year when KD was out. But Kyrie isn't playing, and we can't bank on what ifs. And what we do know is that Kyrie isn't available for majority of the Nets games, and it has to be a major problem for James Harden. However, I feel like I have to reiterate how much I'm not a fan of just getting up and leaving from a team to team, because I'm honestly not. I do think guys should at least try to win in the situations they are in, but if it looks like there's no way of acquiring success, then yeah, I can get with a player wanting out. And at least to point number three, desperation of a ring. Like I said before, Harden has one true goal left in his career, and that is to win a championship. And as many people are mad at the decision of Harden wanting out and requesting a trade, I can't say I'm not surprised. When players want to win, they'll do whatever it takes to do so. Look over the past few years at the biggest moves in the NBA. The Celtics Big 3, The Decision, The Lakers Big 3, CP3 to the Rockets, KD to the Warriors. When elite players want to win, We've seen that they'll do whatever it takes to be on a winning franchise or situation, which made the Brooklyn Nets downfall this season inevitable. Harden going to Philly is just another example that emphasizes my point that for the sake of winning a championship, players will do anything and everything to make it possible. I want to say this because I think it might get lost in what I've said already. With the Brooklyn Nets getting Ben Simmons and the Sixers getting James Harden, there is no doubt in my mind the player with the most pressure to win a championship right now is James Harden. Leaving the Nets and leaving the Rockets over the last year, Harden has now put the target on his back for the next coming months as he's in Philly. It's literally championship or bust for this man. He's got his wish of playing with the general manager he knows in Daryl Morey and as an MVP candidate in Joel Embiid right next to him. Alongside a bunch of role players, Philly was able to keep in the trade. James Harden must win a championship in Philadelphia or all of this would have been for nothing. The Eastern Conference is no longer a cupcake conference anymore, and there are many teams that are favorites as of right now. But even with all the pressure he's gonna face, and slander he'll probably receive for dipping on the Nets, it was the best decision to put yourself in an environment that wants to win at all costs. Because the Nets clearly were not. But we'll see in time how this all plays out. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you're new, be sure to turn that post notification bell on so you never miss a video. Until next time, stay on beat.